What's up guys, welcome to the channel. Today I wanna to do a question and answer session from my patrons. I do live streams monthly with my patrons and I have great questions. So we'll go through, answer interesting questions from patrons. Thank you guys so much. You uh, lead me in the right directions, hopefully. If you wanna skip ahead to any particular question, there is chapter questions, okay? So you can look ahead to whatever question interests you. Wide variety of topics here, so let's get started. First question comes from Kyle. He says, basically, could a system like the palladium be the box orbs? So I don't really know the palladium, but the idea is, could it be some sort of radar reflector inside of a balloon or something like that? Could there be some systems out there that could be replicating these or talking specifically about a dark gray cube inside of a clear sphere that Ryan Graves talks about on the East Coast? So palladium, all I could find was palladium technologies without getting more detail, okay? what? But it was quite interesting here. This drone detection systems. So I did find this from palladium. Shields up, so invisible shields up. It kind of made me think of this. This is interesting. As drones can be used to enhance our awareness and productivity, they can also be invasive. So palladium, they pro provide drone detection, which resembles an invisible shields up, they say. I was like, what is this invisible shields up? Um, but basically what it is is a bond detection of an invading drone we're also identifying, in most cases, the manufacturer of the drone, along with tapping into the video feed, which is seen by the operator of these drones. I thought that was quite interesting, right? If you could tap into video feeds of devices, if this is just a current technology that we have right now, could you be doing that? Could that be part of the technology? It's gonna, you know, and then could you do that to humans? Uh, good thought. Anyway, what they do is our systems then allow the security officer on board to make the decision for drone mitigation. So I guess you have to have your security officer on board or, or someone there. And then their system can disrupt the flight of this drone and either sends it back to the operator or drops the drone to the surface, which, you know, I would assume would destroy it out in the ocean. So that was the Palladium system. So it, I don't know. The biggest thing for me is the pilots who visually saw it. You know, I assume they would know how to identify balloons and etc and how does it still sit in the same location you know how does it stay in stationary in high winds probably the biggest thing for me and that's it next question have you looked into magnetic compression testing done at los alamos this is also from mike so again interesting question i i hadn't okay i hadn't looked into it like, why well, i like patrons also but found this los alamos lab to test giant magnet this is from 2006 though okay so you know what is it 15 years ago almost this is from 2006 though you know 16 years ago but quite interesting los alamos national laboratory expects researchers from around the world to use this new facility for high magnetic field science quite interesting so basically after 10 years of work lab officials announced tuesday that the world's most powerful pulse non-destructive magnet is ready for use at 85 tesla tesla is a measuring unit for magnetic field sounds like a lot because it's a tremendous scientific and engineering accomplishment, said Alex Lacerda, who leads the National High Magnetic Field Los Alamos Center. It's like a very powerful microscope that allows you to zoom in to any material. Excellent. So uh, that, okay, but what I also found pretty interesting, so just searching, right, I found this report, thermally generated uh, magnetic fields and laser-driven laser compressions and explosions. So I think what you're talking about, Mike, uh, is specifically about forcibly compressing a magnetic field. Um, when you think of the potential energy, this can densify. So using explosives, et cetera. Okay, so look at this one. You'll be interested in this. This is back from 1975. I found this. Thermally generated magnetic fields in laser-driven compressions and explosions. So this is interesting for fusion, I think, is what they're using this for. The evolution of thermally generated magnetic fields in a plasma undergoing a nearly spherically symmetric adiabatic compression or expansion is calculated. So quite interesting, right? The evolution. So thermally generated, I think they're exploding it, right? They're blowing stuff up or using heat to make magnetic fields in a plasma. And the plasma is undergoing a nearly spherically symmetric adiabatic compression or expansion. So what that means is perfectly spherical compression or perfectly spherical expansion. So maybe we've seen this before somewhere what does adiabatic actually mean so i looked that up as well i did remember this it means no heat in thermodynamics an adiabatic process is a type of thermodynamic process that occurs without transferring heat or mass it's unlike an isothermal process an adiabatic process transfers energy to the surroundings only as work so it doesn't transfer heat interesting 
That is an adiabatic process. And why do they do this? This is in 75, remember, from NASA. The analysis is applied to obtain approximate results for the development of magnetic fields in laser-driven uh, compression and explosion of a pellet of nuclear fuel. Interesting. Localized sources, such as those occurring at composition boundaries and structured pellets or shock fronts, give str far stronger fields than those driving from... Okay. Although these fields may approach 10 million G in the late stages of compression, this is not expected to present difficulties for the compression process. Interesting. <laughs> Assuming ignition of a nuclear explosion occurs, the sources become much stronger. The values of approximately 10 billion G are obtained at tamper boundaries, assuming a 20% departure from spherical symmetry during the explosion. Okay, not sure what that means. Okay, and then the final thing I saw on this, this is from PubMed, laser-driven magnetic flux compression in high-energy density plasmas. Interesting stuff. The demonstration of magnetic field compression to many tens of megagauss in cylindrical implosions of inertial confinement fusion targets is reported for the first time. So this is reported for the first time in 2009. The demonstration of magnetic field compression to many tens of megagauss in cylindrical implosions. Okay, so now this is actually a cylindrical implosion. And they're using deuterium again, so I think this has to do with fusion, types of fusion. Related to plasmas, high-energy density plasmas, fusion, laser-driven magnetic flux compressions. So I guess the question is, could these be orbs or some sort of technology related? Quite interesting. Thanks for that, Mike. What significance do you place on the Navy patents, if any, and why would the government dis disseminate information on technology of that kind? Theoretical, though it may be. Okay, so why would it disseminate? I think the government has tons of patents anyway. I think they like holding patents, so I don't know how many hundreds of thousands we have, but or the U.S. government has. I think they do that on for many different things. So I think this could just be one of it, one of those patents. So I guess I wouldn't place too much emphasis on it, except that they are being open-minded and looking into this, or at least some facets of it are allowing people to look into it. And why don't we look at it right now? So you go to Google Patents, And you can look at, they're very interesting on your own, right? So this is Google Patents. You can just search by Salvatore Pais is what I'm assuming you're referencing, right? And he has quite a few, okay? Plasma compression fusion device. Wow, look at that. A plasma compression fusion device, which includes a hollow duct and at least one pair of opposing counter-spinning dynamic fusers. The hollow duct includes a vacuum chamber disposed with the hollow duct. Okay, so, interesting. I haven't looked at that one, actually. I've looked in the past. I made a video on these three. Craft using inertial mass reduction device, piezoelectricity-induced high-temperature semiconductor, and a high-frequency gravitational wave generator. So I do make a in-depth review of these in a video uh, from a while ago with Robert Salas. So I can link that, link that here if you want to check that out. But basically, it kind of resembles a... <laughs> type of craft if you were going to do a craft and it gives some possibility for the Pais effect which could be accessing a vacuum energy quantum vacuum state is basically what, what he says kind of accessing a different energy state vibrational quantum energy state so his patents, you know, if you put them together and they actually worked and the Pais effect was proven, which from my understanding, it hasn't been proven, but then you would be able to make a spherical craft that could defy, basically have zero inertia and fly around as fast as it wanted at light speed, essentially. That's the idea of that. So pretty interesting, but from my understanding is it wasn't proven. He has done a couple interviews. His interview on theory of everything, theories of everything with... Uh, Kurt Jaimungal is quite good, and I really like that one, so you can check that out if you're more interested. He does have these other interesting ones, this laser augmented turbojet propulsion system. I was reading through this one, okay, but basically the idea is uh, you shoot lasers to heat up the combustion chamber, right? So a turbojet engine, the, f the difference between the, the temperature of the air coming in and the temperature of the air going out is, is how much thrust you get, right? So cold air coming in, if you can get this air really, really super hot, then that's actually your thrust. So I think he's increasing the temperature here. And my question was, well, th wouldn't that melt the turbine blades? Um, but if you read through basically at the last section here, 
The last section here, he does say the turbojet engine as set forth in claim eight, wherein said internal surface of said hull cylinders are coated with optical substrates selected from the group consisting of silicone dioxide and aluminum oxide. So that was quite interesting to me because from my understanding, basic understanding of jet engines is the, the limiting factor is your turbine melting, right? Because your turbine is basically taking the most heat and your turbine blades, if they start melting, then you're done. And that's why I think the F-22, they made their turbine blades, they grew them out of like one crystal. Somehow they grow it. I, I don't know. Be, <laughs> not sure. Anyway, my understanding, this is interesting. So silicone dioxide and aluminum oxide, how that would keep it from melting. That's probably my biggest question on that one. And then this one was pretty interesting too. I looked at this one a little bit. Uh, it's basically electromagnetic field generator and method to generate an electromagnetic field. Basically, you have a, a little power plant, a little heat generator, and it can somehow produce, it vibrates at high frequencies and generates an electromagnetic field. Right. So the electric motor, powered by the electrical energy generated by the thermoelectric generator, so heater generator, supplies input voltage such that the shell spins at high angular speeds, vibrates at high frequencies, and generates an electromagnetic field. So it's like this spinning ball, <laughs> another orb. I don't know, man. Paisa's patents. Um, so basically it's like a, a spinning metal ball that somehow can generate electromagnetic energy. Not sure on that one. Interesting. All right. Next question from Alana. Is the society going to continue collaboration with Sky360 in the Uintah Basin specifically, or more generally to get observation units up and running at this time? The answer is yes. So 100% sky360.org. That's our... Um, partner organization. We're working with Richard Hoff. We just did a live stream with him on Monday. You can go to the sister channel, UAPsociety.com to check that out. Uinta Basin. So that's where Skinwalker Ranch is, Blind Frog Ranch is. I think for sure we have people that are interested there and willing to work with us. Jim Sagala with his Moop Pass device is very interesting. It'd be great to get some actual Sky360 systems set up. So already I know Tony's ordered one enclosure. We'd like to order more enclosures to get our own systems up and running. So yes, definitely. That is the next step for sure is getting our own UAP Society Sky360 uh, research hub set up. Okay, thanks for those questions. Last question here, uh, from, again from Bill Ferguson. Thanks again. Skyhub360 has a video on YouTube from a year or two ago from a Skyhub camera in Houston showing an object flying to a position. It does. I'll show you where to find that. You can go right to sky360.org. This is, again, our partner organization. Love showing these guys. This is their website. You can go here if you want to join their site. Okay. Thanks for asking. But here you go. These are their examples. This is actually uh, the same night. Okay. Oh, no, an object. This is at... 1018Z, and then we have this one is actually, I believe, at 1028, 1038, a few minutes later. So what you'll find is you see this uh, orb coming in, or we see a flashing light come in, go to here, and then leave. It's quite interesting here. This is the actual footage they're, that they're building, but old school. We actually want much better footage than this, but this is a fisheye lens, okay? So this is one system constantly looking up. It was in Houston. You see it playing here. This is uh, the moon, Venus. Okay, this is, I believe, probably a satellite or high altitude plane, not sure. And then this is your actual UAP. I'll play it through faster, just so. We can play it through normal. So this is it, I'll let you guys watch that. Okay, so you can see here, this is uh, Houston, in Houston. The date is 2020, May 27th at 10.30. So this is a second one. And you see this thing here, okay? This is your interesting, your UAP here. So we can watch that as it's going through real time speed. So Bill asked, showing an object flying to a position where it re remains stationary for 40 seconds, then tracks to another position and makes an impressive 90 degree turn in mid flight. I know the software is still being perfected, but any ideas on why that video didn't get more attention? Um, I think, Bill, the, the biggest thing is with only one point of view, we can't prove it's not a drone, right? So you can do, we, there's a lot of information to be gained, right? This is a helicopter here, you see?
the helicopter looks totally different. So we can't gain something from that. But I'm not sure actually why it hasn't gained more points. This is where it, it stops actually, it stops. You saw a helicopter go by there, it looks totally different. And now this thing just stops there and blinks. So I guess the biggest thing is we can't prove it's not a drone. You could just, anyone, any debunker or anyone could just say it's a drone. And I mean, it looks strange. It does look strange, right? We'd have to have drone experts. Um, so that's the material on this. Not sure why it's gotten more, more publicity, but thanks for asking. The big power we have in the future is that, and I skipped its 90 degree turn. Here we go. So here's where it turns. You see that turn? It just stops and turns there. And stops again. It's weird. But I guess we just can't prove it's not a drone, right? It could just be a drone blinking at night. This is the older camera, okay? The new camera that Richard is developing, uh, QNH183 is what they're looking for right now for the main sensor is much more, much better than this, okay? So all of it is going to be much, much clearer this we can't get much information from so we're upgrading the devices and if we can get two of these systems together then we can triangulate so i would love to get two systems down uh, near each other so awesome thanks for asking thanks to my patrons for all your support all your questions if you want to support the channel as well join a patron ask questions like this go to patreon.com forward slash chris lato but thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button if you did like it and subscribe for notifications of my future videos. Have a great day. Peace.